whatever he's been telling you, it's still going to come to pass. And see, that conquers that discouragement. That's where hope really gets strong in you. What about Jonah? Don't you think Jonah felt hopelessness in the belly of the whale? Don't you think he felt like, now look, look, Lord, I didn't mess around. I didn't got into being disobedient. Oh, come on now. Jonah's not the only one. We got a lot of Jonah's up in here. We got a lot of Jonah's. God told you to do one thing. You're doing something else. God told you I didn't tell you to pursue that career. I told, didn't I tell you? Now you see. Now you see. Look at you. Now you see. But you're in the belt. But the Lord God said, wait a minute. Remember what I promised you. He said, I'm still going to do a work through you. Ooh, somebody needs to get that. I'm still going to do a work through you. He said, you're just, you're just in the belly of the well right now. <laughs> Woo! You're just in the belly. You're in the womb. You have it. You're, you're just right there. But God says, understand that the hope that I, that's stirring up, that's casting that hopelessness, because you're going to get out. And you're going to do exactly what I have for you to do. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about Ezekiel? Didn't I mention to you about the Ezekiel? My Lord, let us turn Ezekiel 37. Oh, I'm trying to close, help me, Holy Ghost. But I think that it's worth noting in the book of Ezekiel, my God, chapter number 37, we hear about them that dry bones. <laughs> Ezekiel 37, my God, I, I, I'm dropping down. Look at the word right there. And I know I can go a little bit longer because you know what? You're sitting there. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need your word. This is your this is your feed, you know. Come on now. This gotta last you until all right now. So you need all you can get. And Ezekiel 37, the Lord God saying that the uh, Ezekiel received the word. And look what it says right here. And look at verse number two. It says, Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very very many in open valley. Indeed, they were dry. All right, you know. Oh, I thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, go ahead and read verse 1. So that way you understand. Some of you, you don't have your Bibles in front of you. So let me help you out. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley full of dry bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were many in the open valley. And indeed, they were dry. And he said to me, said to me, son of man, can these bones live? We're going to pause right there. You must understand, look at what's going on with Ezekiel. And look what's going on. Ezekiel, there's two things that are going on. He was in the valley of adversity. Mm, come on now. He was he sat in the valley of adversity. You said it was, yeah, he's in the valley. That's number one. And when he got there, it was very dry. It was hopeless. I don't know about you, but sometimes we're in a place and we're like, my God, I'm already in the valley. You know, there's a mountain and there's a valley. And sometimes when we're in the valley, and then on, it's not bad enough you're in the valley. Now you're in the valley with some very dry bones, with some things that just don't seem to look like they're going to get any better. Uh, I, I'm maybe preaching to somebody right up in there. It doesn't seem like things are going to get any better. You're in the valley of dry bones. You're like, Lord God, I'm, and so I don't know about you, but when I talk, I, I pray, I talk. I was like, Lord, I'm in the valley. I'm already in this thing. And now I got dry bones on top of the valley? Lord, have mercy. That's somebody has got double. You know, just stuff going on. I know I'm not the only one. Don't look at me like I'm strained and try what you talk about. You got some stuff going on too. My God. And you were, but see, you've been putting up a good smile as your as your umbrella. But the truth is, when you peel back that onion, you can find it. You got some layers that need some help too. Oh, yeah, take that, devil. Yeah, 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 take that. I'm not scared. What can man do unto me? What? You got some issues too with your Holy Ghost help. Thank you, Lord. Glory with your shout and your bid. In the name of Jesus. You're like, why should you talk? I'm not talking. Other. I'm letting you know that there's no judgment here. Amen. Only God can do that. Amen. You have no right to uh, designate who is and who is not. Who put you in charge? We all get in the valley and we need help. And sometimes we're surrounded by dry bones. Look at what's happening. God poses a question. Can these bones live? You see... And look at when he asked the question, hope answered. That's what I like about this right here. You're like there's power just in those verses, right? Because when he asked the question, it was a, 
can these bones live? And surely enough, a little hope answered. Not his feelings, not hope, hope answered, Lord, you know. <laughs> That's hope right there. Because see, flesh would have said, Lord, not. I can't do nothing with them. I, I can't, things are not good. But hope said, you know what? I'm going to answer with hope. Hope responded for the prophet Ezekiel. You're like, I didn't see that. You need to, look, I hope you get it about this time tomorrow when you reread it. You're like, well, wait a minute, God. It says, I answered. So I answered, oh, Lord, you know. That was hope in Ezekiel that said, Lord, you know. He didn't say, well, this, and well, that. Just saying, you know what? That, you know what? Ezekiel was saying, Lord God, you know what you've told me. And I know what you've told me. And I'm expecting whatever you have said to occur. Somebody needs to get that. That's about four or five times I said that. The Lord God's talking to somebody. You need to, God said, whatever you have said, that's what I'm expecting. So, Lord, you know. Hope answered. I'm closing, but you must understand, hope needs to start answering for some of us. Stop trying to get the right answer, because sometimes we don't have the answer. Why don't you let, just say, you know what, the Lord knows. You're like, oh, wait, 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 you don't know, you know what, in order for me not to put my foot in my mouth, I'm going to tell you, the Lord knows. <laughs> wow, I don't know about you, but I'm smart enough to say some things I don't know. I, I just, I, I just don't know, I don't have the answer. I'm not that old wisdom, but my father does know, and I know he knows the answer. So you know what I'm going to say? When I don't know what exactly to say, Lord, you know. I'm going to go there because that's when my hope kicks in. He's like, well, what an answer. It may not be nothing to you, but it means power to me because that means I don't have to put the weight on me. It's almost like you're playing tennis. I don't know if any of you, you're probably not playing now, but whenever you play tennis, it's a, it's a volleying back and forth. Amen. You're going back and forth. You are back and you hit it and you hit it. Well, it's almost like the Lord God said, son of man, can these bones live? And the volley came over to you and then you turn around you're like, and you know what? You're like, instead of you trying to uh, make up, you just hit it back and say, Lord, you know. <laughs> More like, you're not trying. That means you're like, you know what? Instead of me, I'm just going to volley right back. I put it back. You know, some of you still didn't get it. You don't play sports. You don't understand. I put the ball in his court. Mm. Yes. I, come on now. It's no longer resting with me. I don't have to figure what, what. No, 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 no. When it comes to this, I just do this here. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, uh. I put it. Mm. Lord, you know. I put it in his court. And nobody says, you know what? I can handle that. Remember what I told you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember, didn't I, didn't I tell you that you never send the righteous for sin or see begging for bread? Oh, my God, he volleyed that thing. And all of a sudden, you're like, yes, we're going to remember what you said. But remember, you, all of a sudden, scriptures start coming up, coming up, coming up. And you're like, my God. I answered and I didn't answer. Ooh, come on, Holy Ghost. I told you I'm trying to finish this back. Hope for hopelessness. People of God. As I'm trying to close this word, but you must understand that God is telling us that. He said, hope in you is, uh, hope of glory is in you. The hope of glory is in you. You know, Christ in you. When Christ is in you, he's the hope of glory. You don't have to walk around in shame no more. Because <laughs> the hope of glory is in you. You don't have to walk around defeated. Because hope is in you. You don't have to walk around like you're a failure anymore. Come on. Because Christ is in you. You don't have to walk around and, and deal with that. No, you don't have to deal with that spirit of premature death. Come on. Come on. Hey, that's how almost. Why? Because Christ in me is the hope of glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, Christ in me is the hope of glory. That's the glory. That's the glory. That I don't have to walk in shame. I don't have to walk in defeat. I don't have to walk in kill. I don't have to walk in that premature death. Because Lord God said, I shall live and not die. I shall declare the glory of the Lord. My God. You must understand, I'm expecting to live a long life. <laughs> Yay! I'm on a Sunday. They're like, wow, wow, wow. He's like, you sure talking a lot? But you know what? I have belief and I have hope to believe what I'm talking. <laughs> I'm expecting. I'm expecting. That, that, oh, my Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. People of God, you need to understand that Christ is trying to uh, resonate and shine a light. I'm closer, but you must understand. See, hope is a light in a dark place. Ooh, come on now. Because see, some of us, were, we're just sitting in darkness. You're like, well, what do you mean? I may not, you may not be literally sitting in a dark room, but you're in a dark place. Sometimes we get, 
We're just in a place where we feel like there's no light. But the Lord God says, as long as Christ is in you, there's some light. As long as you have Christ in I don't care how dark it may be. The Bible tells me he makes the darkness light. <laughs> and whenever Christ steps in the room, you don't have to push it. Darkness not going to just run away. It has to escape. It has to leave because when light comes in, it consumes your area. I'm talking to somebody. The Lord God said, when you have Christ in your life, that's the hope that you need. I don't care how dark your situation may be. long as Christ is in that place with you, the light is taking over all darkness. Mm. I'm going to tell you that he's that light. You know, a lot of times we think about the, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel. I like to go a little bit deeper. He's not the light of the end of the tunnel. He's light, period. Thank you, Lord God. I don't need to be at the end of the tunnel, right where I am. I don't need to get to the end because he already wrote the end. Ah, oh, come on. I know that. Yes, Lord. I know. I don't know about Sunday. I know. My God. People of God, you must understand. Hope is arguing for you today. Hope is saying, hopeless. You've got to go in the name of Jesus. You must understand that, see, well, one thing you may not have realized is that, you know, you're like, well, Lord God, I haven't gotten to the end of the tunnel. You don't need to get to the end of the tunnel to see the light. The light is with you where you are. You know, my God, whenever Christ is in you, get that. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The light is already there. I don't care you may be going through a dark season. But Christ is in that. Everywhere the Lord got something about to illuminate your footsteps. Come on, Holy Ghost. The Lord got said, I'm about to illuminate your pathway. Everywhere your foot will tread. You're going to be jumping over, leaping over things. You're like, wait a minute. Should I go there? Don't go to that store. Don't go here. Don't go there. Go here. Go there. Illuminate it. You're like, wait a minute. Because... I'm not operating in the dark, and I don't need to wait to get to the end. The Lord God says, you know what, let, let me make it plain right here. Help me, Holy Ghost. I, I see it almost like a book. And I'm closing. Help me, Holy Ghost. I see it almost just like a book. You know, when you have a book, you have a beginning, and you have a middle, and you have an end. You know, you have the climax, you have the end. And you know what? Whenever Christ is in something, you don't have to read the end of the book. You already know the end of the book. You don't have to be like, well, because see, right now, you you know, things are being read. But hope tells me, I know my expected end. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. Even in the end, I, in the end, I win. <laughs> Come on now. I don't, you don't have to read. I don't have to read all the way to the end of the book because I know the end of the story. Christ, victory. You're like, well, wait a minute. You know, because see, it's, I don't know about you, but whenever I know the end of the story, before I, you know, before I get to the climax, it just seems like, oh, I'm doing this here. Like, wait a minute. Why are you celebrating? Because I know the end. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you right now. Some of you are like, well, wait a minute. Don't do you know? I'm, I'm in the middle of this. Do you know your Bible? Do you know the end? Because if you know the end, you should be doing this. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. <laughs> you should be doing that. You're like, well, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of you don't know, but you'll give you a good Holy Ghost laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I used to cheer. I mess around get a cheer on you quick. And victory, victory, victory in the name of Jesus. Because I know the end. You're like, well, did you read? I don't need to read the end because I already know the end. I know the end. I'm just expecting for it to occur. That's where my hope is. Lord God, thank you for this word today. As we give God glory, we thank you, Father God. Lord God, as I seal this word upon your sons and your daughters, your kings and your queens. I thank you, Lord God, that it will go forth and minister to those that are in need, Lord God, that are operating in this, this spirit of hopelessness. That, Lord God, is crushed right now. Father God, as I take this moment and we're praying right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I bind up every ungodly spirit yes, that may Lord. be lurking yes. near the people of God in the name of Jesus. I don't care any unwanted guests, it's it's of the any fear. Turmoil, anxiety, I bind you up right now in the name of Jesus. I render you powerless. The Lord God said, I have hope for the hopeless. Yes. Lord God, discouragement is already defeated foe. The Lord God said that the seed of the woman shall crush the head of the serpent and he shall bruise her heel. I want you to see discouragement already because you're the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. You know your place in God. When you know your place in God, hope in the Lord. You're hoping. And surely enough, hope will not disappoint you. 
Father God, as I'm praying, Lord God, touch every individual. Father God, as I'm praying, Lord God, yes, Lord, I do want to lift up every, Lord God, every caretaker, every doctor, every nurse, Lord God, every sanitized worker, Lord God, every individual that's working and grocery stores or fast food, anywhere where they're coming and cut every caregiver, Lord God, for the nursing homes, Lord God, even for the babysitters that are having to take care of those children that families or doctors are actually working or nurse. Lord God, we're praying and I plead the blood of Jesus on them and over them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, every hospital. Lord God, that's oh every hospital, Father God. We're praying for those that are on the front line in the name of Jesus. Lord God, even the truck drivers in the name of Jesus as they're traveling and transporting goods. Father God, we're pleading the blood of Jesus. And Father God, I'm praying for them now. I'm asking Holy Spirit that you would undergird them in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, take a moment to pray. Come on, take a moment to pray in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're asking Holy Spirit to undergird them. Comfort those family members that may have, their loved ones may have gone on to glory because of this COVID-19. But Lord God, that they're with the Lord. Father God, we're asking Holy Spirit, come with strength. Lord yes, God, Lord. to strengthen them during this time. Yes. Father God, that yes, Lord, they may not understand, Lord God, what's going on. But we're asking Holy Spirit that you would come with strength. Mm. And you would uh, undergird them. Yes. Be the comforter that they need at this time. <laughs> Lord God, to be the comforter that they need that no words can explain. Mm. We thank you, Lord God, for ministering them. Get up from there, sister. You're going to make it. I'm going to send it about. The Lord God is aware of what you're going through. Those that have lost loved ones, the Holy Spirit is going building you up yes. during this time. Lord God, we're praying. We're lifting up, Lord God. Lord God, the, the goal. Lord God, that you hold the whole world in your hands. Father God, so it's not just resonated to this area. Lord God, every city, every country, every state, the entire globe. Lord God, as we're praying, and Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus. Now, Father God, thank you, Lord God, for ministering to those, going into their homes, going into their families, and going individually as well as collectively. Father God, as you're ministering to each one of us, I thank you, Lord God, and we seal this now in Jesus' name. And if you agree, just say amen and amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Oof, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.